Hi, welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda, and today we have with us Australian filmmaker Pete Gleason. Well, welcome. Hi, Marty. Good to be here. <laughs> nice that you could uh, stop in. This is your first time in New Zealand? It is, and yes. Your first night in New Zealand? First night in New Where Zealand. Where else would you be but at the 13th floor? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, but you do have a film that is uh, getting going to be opening here in a couple of days called Hotel Coolgardie. And um, I'm guessing that after viewing this film, your next job will not be for the Australian uh, <laughs> Tourism Board. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Um, funnily enough, when we when we had our Australian premiere in Sydney last year, it was a, it was about the same time that the Goldfields area was launching there tourism campaign so right. so there's a little bit of a tension between the, the two understandably yes for those who don't know what the film entails it's a documentary explain a little bit of just kind of the basic premise well hotel cool is about a couple of finnish backpackers lena and steph who arrive in perth having been robbed of their travel savings in in bali they're off on their 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 world travels yeah. um and they uh get posted to a pub uh, deep in the Aussie outback um, and discovered that there's a little bit more expected of them than, than, than just pouring drinks and it's about how they adapt to this very kind of insular um, hyper masculine right. uh, kind of coliseum that they're, they're <laughs> thrown, thrown into. And th this is uh, an area of the country that you're fairly familiar with right? Yeah, a little bit. I've I've, I've done uh, a bit of work out there, and you know, I've passed through through there from time to time. Right. Um, and it's 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 out in, in the in the gold fields, which is the the last kind of wild west area of the country that you know it's still it's a gold rush right. town, a gold rush region. Um, and up until a few years ago, they they still had um, skimpy bars. Every every pub you walked into, there, there were skimpies, which are topless barmaids um, <laughs> and there was a, a couple of brothels and there was more pubs per capita than than anywhere else in the in the country right and this and the biggest gold pit in the country um, so it was where men went to make their fortunes and traditionally there are a lot of men and not many women it's, it's changed a lot so um, this is the upgraded yeah. civilized version of it <laughs> which is kind of frightening yeah, if you yeah, think yeah. about it <laughs> um, yeah uh, so you've got these these two uh, women, they're in their mid twenties. They're attractive. They're from Finland. They have mm -hmm. no idea what they're getting into. How did you come across them, and what? How did you get them? Did you? How much t discussion did you have with them about getting them to be involved in having you follow them around? Um, well, they were they were the great unknown. We had the location that we we're filming in, and we intercepted the the women before they went for their job interview. Mm -hmm. So we interviewed multiple pairs of uh, prospective um, barmaids and um, just explain what we were doing, that we wanted to film and um, nobody really knew what what was going to transpire. Right. Um, so they were happy to do that and, and, and exp have that, you know, as a bit of a record. Their, right. Their well, they were on an adventure their, anyway, yeah, right? And, yeah, this <laughs> adventure of discovery and this <laughs> kind of authentic outback experience that they were hoping to, to, um, to have. So... Um, yeah, th they could have been any any girls with kind of any sense of humour, yeah. any boundaries, any you know, from any country. It was, yeah, they were the great unknown. Yeah. And in the end, we got Lena and Steph. Yeah, uh, mm. they seemed to be ideal for what you wanted to. I don't know. Did you have any kind of plan in mind when you started out on this thing? Was there something that you hoped to kind of reveal or accomplish? Yeah, we wanted to observe the Aussie m male in their kind of natural habitat, yeah. the pub. <laughs> Not all Aussie men, but out, out there there's, you know, there's pl plenty of kind of heavy drinking blokes that go to the pub um, and, and, and let loose. They work hard, they play hard. Yeah. Um, and I'd been on the drinking side of the bar, you know, most of my life. Um, and I've worked, all, I've worked on the, the working side of the bar as well. Right. Um, and they're very different experiences. Uh, and I, I thought it would be interesting to see how we looked through the eyes of, you know, f firstly foreign, right. foreign eyes, and and then secondly female eyes. And I was also interested in what the women meant to the men of the town as well, because whenever there was a, a changing over of, of the uh, the barmaids, um, 
there's this great anticipation in the town. Oh yes. <laughs> you know, somebody's, you know, temporary girlfriend might be leaving town. Yeah. You know, it might mean that that, and that's yeah. that might be sad for the guys, or it might be the guys that were, um, you know, thinking of the opportunities that these new girls would yeah. present. Just a fresh face to talk to for some of them. There's a lot, well, and, I mean, a lot and, of different things to a lot of different. They men. were referred to more than just a fresh face. It was more like fresh meat to some people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah to, to some of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I have to say, I mean, I've been around for a while, and <laughs> when they actually get their kind of greeting in this new place, it was pretty hardcore, and probably. I mean, it, I mean, there were points where I was embarrassed to be a male. So, <laughs> yeah, the greeting, yeah. you know, just and the way that they were uh, right from the beginning and just kind of kept going from there. Was, the, the, were you surprised by that? I was. I, I expected to make much, a much more subtle film about adaptation and assimilation and, and that kind of thing. And, and um, as you know, the women before the Finns were, were Welsh girls, and they yeah. had a great time. They were, right, they, were they looked like they were having a ball. Raced by the town, they actually stayed over longer than they needed to in the town once they'd finished their job, which no one usually does. Right. They usually get out of dodge, <laughs> whether they've had a good time or an okay time. Um, uh, so you could see that juxtaposition of, of, of how good a time people can have. Right. And I was interested in just exploring that kind of middle ground there in that transaction between the, the men of the pub and the, the women and whether or not that, whether or not there was any compromise mm -hmm. in that transaction on, on behalf of the girls. Because you, when, you, when you go out into, into the world and you're having your, your experiences, you want them to be funny, you want them to be, to be good. And for women, I think they often find that they have to um, just play along and be good sports. And if they yeah. do that, they're gonna have a much better time right. of it than if they draw boundaries um, that they are absolutely entitled to but draw. But let's face it, yeah. if they were males and had that, you know, been greeted with that kind of, it would, nobody would have thought twice if they didn't want to go along with that kind of treatment, right? Probably, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. so that's what the, the the film's about, really. It's about it's a it's it's a film that blokes will really really relate to because it's so Australian and so blokey, and the, the vernacular is is, yeah. is what we're, we're all used to, and the jokes are what we're all used to. Yeah. But the jokes keep going and going and going and going. Um, yeah, because they kind of gets... write everything off as like, oh, we're just having a laugh. Yeah. So yeah. it just justifies anything that they might say or do, mm. which of course these girls don't look at it that way necessarily all the time. No, um, no. And when that compounds and that becomes your entire ex experience, it becomes grueling. And that's yeah. that's what this, the people comment on is that it, it just um, shows you just how exhausting it is. It's, yeah. it's kind of death by a thousand cuts because nobody does anything that without giving too much away, there's um, there there's, there are plenty of things that go on that if they happen in isolation, right, you would you would be able to brush over and you'd say, oh, that was a, that we, we got a bit loose last night, but but it didn't go too far. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when when that compounds and compounds okay. and compounds. And the other thing is, I found when I was watching it, like there is uh, this one character, Pikey, who yeah. I found particularly scary as soon as he, the first time he was on camera. And there's this one scene, uh, again, I don't want to give away too much, but I was, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, thank God there's a cameraman there, <coughs> even though you know, you're not supposed to be thinking about the way that the thing was made. But at that point, there were certain times mm. when that certainly enters into your mind mm. when you're watching the film going, okay, they're not alone in mm. this situation. Yeah, he's, he's got this men menacing physicality about him. Um, and he does have a softness and a tenderness there as well, but yeah. but it's it's hard to to get to, and it's hard to see through the you know the the, the menace and 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 also through through the things that he, he talks about. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a I had a relationship with Pikey where I I kind of understood him bloke to bloke, so I didn't consider him scary right, right. Um, but because we're seeing it through the eyes of the women there's a scene early when he's um, he's saying some fairly um, violent things yes um, and then there's a scene later and and that kind of feeds into yeah. into what this girl must be thinking may or may not going kind to of happen to her um, <laughs> yeah. pay no attention to the cat <laughs> <laughs> 
she likes to <laughs> inter invade every interview that we do. So, yeah. So, but as far as that kind of brings to question the role of you being the filmmaker, you were the cameraman for almost all of it. Were, am I yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you were there yeah. while all this was going on. Yeah. And were there times where you felt that you almost had to kind of intervene with any kind of behavior <laughs> or? Uh, not really. I mean, um, in that scene that you're talking about, you see the camera, you know, detach from its position and, and go and kind of bear witness to, you know, up closer to yeah. what's happening. And, and that might have been a diffusing right. um, action. I don't, I don't know. But then again, the scene may not have happened if the camera wasn't there. So it's hard to know what the camera does and doesn't do. Yeah. For me, it felt like I was just another face in the pub. Yeah. Um, with a camera, and a camera is not going to be the most unusual thing that that pub's going to see in any day. So, and these days, cameras are pretty innocuous. Yeah, they're small. Yeah. They don't make a lot of noise. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we were we were visible. People knew we were there. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, were, we were annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, <That's good. coughs> um, uh, but yeah, there was never. We were out there making a, a film, of, you know, ob, ob, observing the film, and they, they had plenty of other people around them. Um, but obviously, if we ever thought the girls were going to be in danger, and when there's a medical issue later on, yeah. we behind the scenes kind of um, yeah, suddenly address that a little. Yeah. And, yeah. and the other thing was, a few, there were a few times when the people addressed the camera directly. Yeah. And it didn't happen a lot, but just enough to kind of happen. Was there quite a bit of thought involved on your side as to whether you wanted that to, yeah, to occur? Yeah, absolutely. People talk about fly on the wall filmmaking and we, we, we wanted to be unobtrusive. We didn't want to kind of be seen to be driving any of the action that was going on. But at the same time, I love those little looks to camera to yeah. their, their nods as if you were in, as an audience, you're in there, you're right in immersed in amongst the men. And they're kind of nods of um, compliance or an expectation of compliance. They're like, you're with us here, aren't you? Or this is funny, yeah. isn't it? Um, and I love those because it kind of pins the audience a little bit. It's, it's like the, 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 the look down the lens on, in the, that great um, uh, Truffaut, Truffaut, Truffaut? Truffaut. Truffaut. Um, <laughs> Uh, film 400 Blows, where yeah. he suddenly looks at the audience and then suddenly you're, you're aware that you yeah. have to... Well, and that's also, um, I don't know if you watch House of Cards, the new one with Kevin Spacey, yeah, but yeah. he does that all the time. Oh, yeah, He's yeah. suddenly just in the middle of a speech, yeah. you know, he'll just turn and... Yeah, and I love that about observational documentary. Yeah. It demands a response from the audience. You go in there, you put, you, you, you know, you decide where you're pointing the camera and you decide what people are looking at, but at the end of the day, the interpretation is based on the the experience of the the audience. Yeah. Um, so you know, as a result, you have people who watch Hotel Coolgardie and um, feel nostalgic. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> well, I believe it in um, that it does hopefully recall a time that you think had long passed yeah, for most people, yeah. but apparently that behavior is mm. still going on in certain areas. Yep. Would you say for someone, I've been to Australia a few times, but mostly to the urban centers, <coughs> is it representative of, of a significant portion of the population or is it an anomaly? Oh, uh, look, it was, that doesn't happen to any, everybody that goes out there. You know, you know, we definitely could never claim that. Yeah. But you know, the the, the values and the principles that are underlying you know, the, the the behaviors and attitudes are certainly prevalent in not only in Australian society but in society in general. Right. And in the age of Trump, they're even more. Yeah, know, yeah. With the, our world, they're prevalent in our. Yeah. The, you know, the world's leader. Yeah. You know. Um. So. <laughs> Yeah, people are going to see things that are totally familiar to them, and we've, you know, out there they've just turned up the volume a little bit, and yeah. um, and and we, we we appear shocked by it, <laughs> which is kind of worrying in itself because it's it, it feels like a lot of the audience detaches themselves yeah. from it and and they're outraged at it, but at the same time, it's there it's, all, it's the time. all through the fabric of, yeah. of society. Yeah, and when you get reactions from people, are the reactions of the female viewers very different from the male viewers? Um, we get a lot of reactions from female viewers just saying, um, 
uh, thank you for, for articulating that right. experience. Yeah. Because as a bloke, you walk through life and you don't have to play those games. Yep. You, 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 walk, you do feel pressure to behave in a certain way or not, but you're not really pursued in the way that, that women often are. And <coughs> historically, even you know, in, in movies, in, in the media, in, in um, you know, this concept of romance, um, men were supposed to pursue women. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you watch those old 50 movies, yep. it's about men trying again, trying again, trying again, and the woman saying, no, 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 no. And okay, yes. Yeah. And that's kind of an old, this old fashioned sense of chivalry. Right, it's all right. embedded in there. And I think people are finally getting the memo now that, you know, women deserve and have the right to agency as to who they have in their life and in what capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're all kind of catching up to understanding that at diff, you know, in different yeah. stages. So yeah. um, w- uh, women r- 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 really resonates with women because they, they, they see what um, many women experience on a daily basis up on the screen. Um, and then for men, it's just a great insight into looking at, at, at this microcosm of the pub, which is representative of the broader society through the lens yeah. of a woman. So it's a, it's a feminist film for men. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> In a way. <laughs> now this is your first feature. And before that, you've, you've done television work and a few shorts and things like that. Mm-hmm. Was, was there anything, was anything you could have done differently to prepare yourself for making a film like this? I mean, this is a particular kind of filmmaking that's involved here. Um, well, technically, we could have done things a lot differently. Um, filming in a pub is really hard. <laughs> yeah. um, and we had a, a very, very long post-production process because we had to, the, the window of opportunity opened very quickly and we just picked up whatever we had right. and went and filmed. And so you had lots of footage. We had a lot of fit- footage. None of it was synced. Vision wasn't synced and sound was, wasn't synced. And we took, it took literally years to, to get it into Right, because yeah, I was surprised that it was shot in 2012. Mm. And yeah. I was thinking, well, why is it yeah. only coming out now? Yeah. That's the and answer. it was shot with, uh, on a low budget and I was not an established filmmaker, so we'd, right. we had to kind of have funding drip fed to us for, for quite a while um, and do it, you know, complete it in between other jobs. Um, so if I did it again, I would have a, a better infrastructure yep. um, around that. Um, but it, it's one of those films, Obdoc's great like this, it's the stories kind of come to you and you know a lot of a lot of filmmakers observational f- filmmakers just become filmmakers because they have access to a stor- story you right, know? right it's not that they're there going and looking for these stories it's that something remarkable has happened and they have to yep. film it and then they might get an editor on board or a producer or all that kind of thing um, so for us we we're really lucky in that we had this great context we had this great location we had these great characters and we knew how to um, <coughs> Uh, capture it, capture and it, use turn it, gear. it into something. Yeah, yeah, and plus we, you know, we we were familiar with that world, so we knew how to exist um, behind the bar and on the drinking side of the bar. Right, and um, and, and we we kind of knew what the, the the that institution of the bar was going to look like when you were removed from it. If that makes sense, yeah. you know, in the in the same way that Frederick Wiseman's films do that, they go in there and see what's been normalised and naturalised yeah. inside this world, and then when you project it outside this world, you realise that there's a whole lot of stuff yeah. <laughs> going on that you didn't realise. So um, the film is playing in Auckland and Dunedin, uh, starting on June twenty second, mm-hmm. and hopefully people can get out to see it. Maybe there'll be a DVD release at some point. Uh, uh, possibly, yeah, and we'll be on VOD, uh, video on demand in some form uh, very soon, I think. Yeah, very cool. And so anything else in the works? Uh, yeah, we have a few other projects being germinated. Uh-huh. Um, uh, maybe Obdoc, uh, maybe a little more structured. <laughs> um, <laughs> Having learned from the first time around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, We'll try, we'll try and do something that's a little more modular this time. It right. doesn't, doesn't take so long. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, plenty of ideas have been bottlenecking while we've been making this. So it just comes down to opportunity and, and hopefully we'll have something in the works soon. Very cool. Well, hopefully you can come back and tell us about it. Yeah, in the meantime, thank you very much. Thank you, Marty. Good to see you. Thank you.